Right, okay, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. What is up, my Bordeaux Warriors, and welcome back to another video. Uh, today, I'm gonna be going through your exercise suggestions when it comes to the lower body video I did a couple of weeks ago, which was all around basically the Nordic curl, the natural hamstring curl. It was actually quite a long video. I went through a bunch of the different things that I was thinking in terms of training it and setting it as a new goal to aid with those lifting lower body strength focuses of the squat and the deadlift that I've mentioned beforehand. And a lot of you had some thoughts to add to it. So uh, we're gonna spend today going through all of those and probably just a little bit more of a deep dive on the Nordic Cup. I don't know why this one has caught my interest so much, but yeah, the last the last two weeks I've gone quite in depth into thinking about the best way of training it. So I look forward to sharing that with you and sharing what you guys are also saying. Um, but first, but first I, I've got to finish off this book, The Art of Resilience by Ross Edgley. Uh, this was the first book in the book club that I set up like six weeks ago. So there is a live stream tonight not that you're going to be able to watch it because this video is coming out like a couple of weeks afterwards uh, but if you do want to join the the next episode of the book club and find out what book we're going to be reading uh, and share your thoughts on it then go check the description down below to watch that one i'll catch you when we uh, when we start training right so i've just been looking through all your comments for like the past half an hour and uh i think i'm gonna to have to go to the hardware school aka being cute to quickly grab a couple of things to make the setup to be able to do this. So I'm gonna film this because uh, of two words, business expense. <laughs> I picked up some wood because I'm gonna just make a shoe covered theme. Gotta keep yourself busy during uh, during lockdowns. Not much else to do other than train and work. Right, let me let me show you why I have to go get this stuff. So by far the most common uh, suggestion was the use of bands for Nordics, um, which is kind of why I had to go to the, the DIY store and to grab some of these, which are shield anchor bolts. So basically they're just a strong fixing that you can put into a wall because you know, I'm still going to be training at home now. I think the gyms are supposed to open in the UK on April 12th, which is still a little way away. So if I'm going to be taking this Nordic goal seriously, I may as well make a setup that is serious. So uh, for the anchor, you've got this big ass uh, carabiner, and then you've got the anchor point, we we'll screw it in. This is big enough to loop a resistance band around. Um, simple as that really. In terms of height, you want to go a little bit higher. If you go too low, it doesn't really give you the angle of assistance that you want. So I'm going to go roughly around head height. Drill the hole, put it in, bish bash bomb. Obviously, you could make this a lot easier for yourself just by attaching it to something high up. There's probably some options, but I've got nothing else to do, so overkill it is. I also only have a handheld drill because uh, no hammer drill. So we'll see what happens. So uh, short answer to a long story, the, the drill wasn't cutting it, so I just went in and bought a hammer drill. Yeah, that was much easier. It's not going anywhere. I mean, the force going this way is gonna be super strong. Going out that way, a little bit less strong. But um, for the intensive purposes of what we're using it for, it's it's way, way overkill. Seems to work. I think that's a pretty cool setup. Okay, so a um, couple of modifications since the last time I was off. I'm now using this yoga bolster underneath my knees that kind of sets the height perfectly to be supported by the base. So the reason bands are useful, like a lot of you did mention this in the comments and you know, fair play to you, you understand what you're talking about. Bands are good. I have used bands for these in the past, 
the effectiveness though I found has varied, partly because it almost makes it too easy. As you could see from that first clip, I literally haven't warmed up, but I could easily hold myself. Like that wasn't that wasn't really that much effort. Obviously, this is the heaviest band that I have. If I put it a small band, it's gonna make things quite a bit different. Bands are good because they match the strength curve of the Nordic. The Nordic is easier at the top because gravity is acting down, there's not much leverage. As we go further down, then gravity and that lever extends. It's gonna be the hardest point at the bottom and then it gets easier to get back up. So the band has less assistance when it's not as stretched, more assistance when it is stretched. So it matches that strength curve. It gives you more assistance when you need it, less assistance when you don't. All good. There is also a little bit of a nuance in terms of the fact that you're going to be weaker anyway in terms of how the ligaments and the tendons in the back of the knee are structured at the bottom, but we'll get past that. So point number two, some people mentioned, was to do with using the hip hinge method. So the hip hinge method is essentially when the hips are going to stay here, we're going to hinge and go through. And then eventually over time, that becomes a little bit more extended. But the issue with doing a hip hinge, this is not necessarily training the same movement as doing a Nordic. When I'm doing a Nordic, the movement is that of knee flexion. When the hinging joint is the knee. In this position, the hinging joint is the hip. It's almost more akin to doing a glute bridge. It's a hip extension exercise as much as it is a knee flexion exercise. Yes, there's some element of knee flexion, but it doesn't train your hamstrings in the same position. So as much as possible, if you're training this, you should be training it with the body as close to straight or as straight as you can get it. Unless you're an absolute beginner, then the hip pinch might be useful. So in that in mind, you have to have a straight body when training this. Your two options basically are using bands like this one, or your second option is using partial range of motion, which is what I covered in the last vlog. I was doing the rep off a surface then lowering through full range and this is what Ben Patrick from the Tur guy which a lot of you also mentioned and have been following for a long time he uses partials as well so uh, to kind of summarize my thoughts on this one I don't think partials are the best way to go I'm not saying that Ben doesn't know his stuff Ben does know his stuff but just thinking from a practicality standpoint we want strength for a full range of motion if we're only training partials hence the name, we're only training part of the range of motion, we're only getting stronger for a range of motion. Yes, we'll get a little bit of strength outside of that, gradually working towards full, but I think ultimately it would be better to try and train the full range of motion from the get-go. The, the drill that I was doing in the last episode where I was using my hands to give myself some assistance, not the same as the one where people just drop and then catch themselves in their hands. You still wanna maintain a nice slow tempo and use as little assistance as possible whilst keeping the body straight to lower down. Or if you are gonna use partials, you should probably do some accessory movements in which you're training that knee flexion through a full range of motion. So the body weight example would be something like a slight hamstring curl. Yep, I think that about covers it. Really, this is an unnecessary amount of detail. Um, but I would, I've just been interested. So um, if you have any thoughts, let me know in the comments down below. And also, I'll give a quick shout out to PT, um, who actually made a video and then sent me this video in an email and I thought the video was actually very good. So that's his progression that he's gone to get a full Nordic in which he did use the bands. Um, and so I'll link that down below. It's worth checking out if you are interested. Oh, that's hard. I mean, I like it, but it feels way, way, way easier. This is like a five normal Nordics, or like an eight or a nine. I don't know if that will translate over to the games, but you'd thought so. <laughs> now I could just be getting silly, but we'll see. So uh, if you didn't know what that was, it's called a weight releaser. Often used in weightlifting, they have little like, hooks that go on the bar. Uh, so you use a really heavy load for the eccentric, and then the weight drops and you bang out a few quick reps of a lighter weight. 
and this is a good way of potentiating the nervous system. Obviously, you're stronger than the eccentric. It's just kind of fun to mess around with these things sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that was a bit more intense. So yeah, that's my uh, that's my kind of more in-depth thoughts on the Nordic. And thank you guys for commenting in the last video. If you have anything else you want to add, feel free to let me know. Maybe you want to see me do this sort of hacked looking at a movement sort of thing in another vlog. If you do want to see that, maybe leave a suggestion about what movement you'd like to see it on. And I'll see if I can make it happen. So the last point I want to say is, in terms of training it, keep it very simple. Um, the, the research shows that actually less is more, especially with this drill. Once per week seems to be pretty reasonable. I'd have probably said anywhere from three to five sets. And again, hamstring's a little bit more fast twitch, so probably gonna do better with lower rep ranges. But if you're new to this, then there will probably be some benefits to doing higher rep range or lower rest sort of stuff as well. I'm at the moment doing five by threes. I kind of like that. Nice little setup. Other than that guys, it's basically uh, the end of this week's video. I'm gonna finish up this leg session now. Um, probably pretty sure there's gonna be enough ramblings in today's vlog, it doesn't need to be any longer. Uh, but as always, if you enjoyed this one, you can hit that thumbs up button and support the channel. Right next to it is that subscribe button. So if you wanna join the Bodyweight, <laughs> if you wanna join the Bodyweight Warrior tribe. And don't miss out on any more future videos. But that's basically been it for this week, guys. I'll catch you in the next episode. Have a strong week and 